Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Thanks for taking the time. Pleasure, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so, wow, what a what a tense uh, finale of, of the end of season two. Um, I feel like all of the finales of all the, you know, Game of Thrones and House of Dragon series are always kind of divisive, I guess, because, you know, a product of the fact that people are so invested in this world, so invested in these characters. I mean, now that everyone's had a chance to see it, what we, what are your reflections on this sort of cliffhanger that we're left on? Yeah, I think I think it's a, a nice little teaser of what's to come. I know people were craving, uh, you know, some sort of big blowout World War kind of situation um but rest assured that's all to come and i wondered if in some ways kind of the frustration that Egan feels it sort of mirrors sort of the broader picture so there's something quite fitting about that yeah i think there's a lot of frustration within within the realm in general i think people are wanting progress to be made there's just it feels like you're running on a treadmill a little bit yeah I, yeah i i understand anyone's frustration but that's a good sign that people are invested and and want more to come you know <laughs> and Aegon, what as, as as a character in general i mean there's so much to get your teeth into here i guess you know he could be played in some ways a bit of a one note villain um but there's a lot of nuance there and you know you could see him in lots of ways as kind of a victim of circumstance um and there's a lot of vulnerability to his character as well as him just being an antagonist so what was your approach to the character and what have you enjoyed about playing him? Well, exactly that, really. Just wanting to sort of bring a level of humanity to him and uh, relatability, you know. I think it, you're right, it is a trap to fall into to play him one note and to just kind of go for the villainous approach. But there's always a reason to, to someone's actions and uh, behavioural patterns. And it was my challenge this this season to investigate that and to try and kind of pad out that that aspect to him. There's just so many layers to be had with with Egon. He's he's the gift that keeps on giving, and it's always nice to kind of throw people off the scent a little bit and give them something that they didn't expect. I've felt desperately sorry for Egon since since first putting that wig on and and stepping on set. Uh, I think he's an absolute tragedy. As difficult as it is to bring a bring an authenticity to that, it's, it's I'm, I'm loving the challenge, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed with him, and I just want to give him a hug, to be honest. And thinking of the arc that has gone on in this season, I mean, by, by the end of this, you know, by that finale, you know, he's completely broken, bedridden. In a way, was that almost the most challenging part of playing him? You know, this completely broken person. I think he's been broken for a long time and he's just been trying to hide it and uh, survive and um, kind of f make progress in himself. And, and I think he's conscious that he wants to be a better person. He just doesn't quite know how. Uh, he hasn't had that nurturing that, that I think you require to have a good understanding of values and morals and, and just that capacity to, to love. And that's why, you know, I think his reaction to the loss of Jaharis was so visceral for him because this is the first time he's fully allowed himself to love something and to feel that sensation of love. And for that to be snatched away from him, that was kind of the last straw, uh, or what he thought was the last straw until he was bedridden, caused by his own brother. Um, and so I, I think we're going to see a very different side of Egon where his his want to be a good person and a good king has slightly started to dissipate and he's becoming colder and more calculated and I think he's going to really let his darkness out. And you've got some absolute zingers of lines, for, you know, throughout the whole show, particularly in that finale um, where he's talking a certain appendage being burnt. Is it sausage on a skewer or something? Um, Yep. I mean, a bit like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it kind of quite glorious sometimes to lean into, you know, that 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 bit of bit of edge, you know, kind of like that darkly humorous um side he has to him too? Of course, yeah. I mean, I think I think he's hilarious. I <laughs> think he's a very funny character. I I think yeah, that was a, I think that was a shock actually going into season 2 how off even just coming off the page how how funny i found him but he doesn't mean to be funny ever i don't think he's just he's he's just quite unpredictable and quite volatile and uh yeah he's catatonic and that that unpredictability and that danger to him sort of makes him 
quite a quite an electric presence in a room. Um, but yeah, those those yeah, the writers have uh, gifted me a few absolute zingers, like you say. <laughs> Um, and an absolutely phenomenal cast across the board. Um, but, you know, particularly working with Olivia, with Ewan, you know, getting deeper into those um, family dynamics and then more broadly, you know, with Emma, with Matt. How has that been? Um, I mean, you must have such a tight bond at this point from working together for so long. Um, but And it must have just been such a joy to work alongside them. Yeah, it is. Everybody is, um, is a virtuoso at what they do. And to be surrounded by that level of of talent across the board, not only cast but crew, uh, creatives, everybody, um, it's such a dream team. And uh, yeah, I feel very lucky to be an actor in that environment where I I get to benefit from everybody else's talent and and um, and professionalism and uh, investment in the work. You know, we, we, I think we have a really good balance on this show of. You know, in the downtime, we have a laugh, and we're, you know, we're 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 all we're all best pals. You know, and it's great. And then when it's time to work, everybody's so invested and so dedicated, and um, and really puts the work first. And yeah, it's a really nice balance. It and it, it that's so rare as well. It's I know everyone says, oh yeah, we've had a great time, but genuinely on this show, it's just it's a it's a dream to go to work. It really is. And the production values, you know, they are really. Off the chart, really, and, and you know, this incredible balance of you know those worlds feeling very tangible and grounded, yet also you know the you know the CGI used for the dragons and the the action scenes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What is it like step, stepping onto those sets every day? And I say maybe even putting on the wigs and putting on the costumes, I guess, helps you in lots of ways to kind of jump into that character. And that's quite the experience, you know. I feel like a I feel like a little boy who's sort of at Christmas time won a competition and gets to go on and see all these cool things happen around them. It's great. You just kind of have to take it in your stride, though, rather than be <laughs> too uh, too awestruck by it all. But it, it is. It's, it's spectacular, the, the, the amount of effort and technology and uh, time that goes into creating a show like this is, um, is, is mind-blowing. And, to, yeah, like I said before, to be on the receiving end of that and to just literally turn up in your in your costume and your makeup and you know be put on that set you, you're already there you know there's there's often regard well apart from the blue screen stuff there's very little imagination required because it's so vivid and three dimensional this this entire world that the amazing um, creatives of the show have created yeah no spoilers but what can you tease about what's next for your character in, in season three i mean there's so much expectation hung in that finale but you know what perhaps can you tell us about what's to come oh not very much otherwise i'll get fired um and i don't want that thank you very much but um yeah there's i mean there's a the the adventure's about to start i think and um and anybody who's felt like season two has not given them what they wanted by the end just stick with it because it's it's about to get tasty. And casting your mind back, I mean, were you a huge Game of Thrones fan right from the beginning? And and when the prospect of jumping on board with this show, I mean, was there, I guess, no hesitation as such, but maybe trepidation? You know, this is a world um, that has just got such a strong fan base and, you yeah. know, one really hangs off every scene and every moment amazingly. I, I wasn't a fan of Game of Thrones, not because I'd seen it and didn't like it, because I just hadn't, I'd just missed the boat with it. Um, a lot of my mates were really into it and, and, and you know, watched it religiously as it was coming out. And for, for, for whatever reason, I just hadn't, I just missed the boat. I, I, I wasn't really into the, the fantasy stuff at that point in my life. Um, but then once this, this, this script came through and this, this tape, uh, self tape obviously did that having no idea what the Game of Thrones world was for me the the script that I was given initially felt very kind of Shakespearean and classical in terms of it had a sort of a theatrical nature to it and I, I responded really well to that I, I love that kind of thing love Shakespeare love classical theatre that I was on the kind of reference point but then once getting the role I absolutely rattled through the Game of Thrones seasons I loved them became a, a super fan and so now being a part of a show like this is really exciting yeah and when it's based on source material you know, like george R. R. martin's 
books did you go back to you know the fire and blood book yeah. uh, any of the other you know i mean i guess a lot of it's there in the script and there are extra twists and turns um but maybe that can also pro provide some background too absolutely yeah, it definitely does it feels like um the fire and blood book is the spine of the story that we're telling and what our writers do so so magically is pad out and put the meat onto the bones and um really create uh, layers to George's story that um, that might not be apparent in the book, but really bring uh, George's story and, and ours to life, and they kind of go together hand in hand. Yeah, and this, 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 this world that they've created as a team is, uh, yeah, like you say, it's, it's, uh, it's quite something. And what do you think the appeal is? You know, there just does seem enduring appeal for you know, the, the, the Tolkien stories, uh, you know, being taken into these fantasy worlds. But then there is so much, you know, there's so much human story within that as well. And yeah. all these sort of flashes of things that totally can chime with things happening in contemporary world too. Um, I think, well, I think they're relatable stories within a lawless land almost, you know, it's, it's, it's that I think what we're seeing in shows like these and shows like House of the Dragon are people who are going through very modern and relatable stories in a setting where you can kind of deal with them however way you want. I'm sure there are a lot of people who'd like to live in that time, you know, but also there's a danger to that time as well. Like, you know, your head could be lopped off at any moment and there's a there's an excitement to that and there's a, yeah, there's a kind of a rawness to it. So yeah, I don't know, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's an escape as well. It's an escape from today's world where everything's kind of very, formulaic and uh kind of technology driven and there's just a there's a rawness and the sort of back to basics level to to this kind of this kind of world you know and looking at your career i mean you've been positively prolific over the past few years from don kirk tolkien the king um other tv shows like the jetty the ferryman on stage um, I think you're also in a band. I mean, how do you keep all of this up? Do you where do you have one element of it that's really you know the thing that you like the most, or or is almost the breadth of it part of the appeal for you? Um, I like the variety. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not doing the band anymore, but um, uh, yeah, the, I, I'm I'm always about whatever medium it is. If it's a character that challenges me and that makes me feel uncomfortable and makes me feel like I can't do it, then I'll then I'll nine times out of ten i'll do it um if it's a story i feel passionate about or that that um sort of stems my intrigue or that makes me again makes me feel uncomfortable or curious in any way i just yeah i just always want to be kind of pushing my own boundaries and doing things that that little voice in my head tells me i can't do so yeah when i took on the role of egg on i was like there is absolutely no way i'm gonna be able to do this what have i done <laughs> um but it's I, I love that I, I thrive off those kind of challenges and and um, proving to myself or attempting to that that you know I can if I put my mind to it I can I can give it give it a good stab. And do you know what's on the horizon next, or do you have anything on the bucket list that you haven't yet been able to do that you're, you're striving for? Uh, yeah, there are a few things bubbling, um, but uh, can't really go on about them too much. But yeah, I just again like just keep doing things that challenge me and work with people who I admire and that will make me better at my job and um, that I can learn from. Yeah, just keep telling stories that that I feel should be told. You know, it's a, it's a great it's a great medium in which to tell stories, I think, for film and TV and theatre, um, provides an escape for people and, and, and hopefully can kind of hold the mirror up to their own lives a little bit. I know that's what film, TV and theatre does for me. Um, I see a lot of myself in the stories that I see on stage or on screen. I just hope that kind of gives people some form of escape and, and, and it be cathartic to, to those that need it, you know. Congratulations on the show and obviously cannot wait for season three as well. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Nice to chat. Nice to chat. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.